Hey guys, I'm Chanel with Lizzie's Charm and we are about to do your fire sign spring equinox reading. All right, so the content on my channel that I've been providing, all of those things is just about to, it, it's shifted, it's switched, it's changing. It has changed, all right? It's not, it, it's in the movement of it and it's already there all at the same time, you know? so. Um, you will receive these types of readings every season change, every solstice, every equinox. And we are going to start off with spring because spring starts tomorrow, March 20th. We are leaving out of Pisces season, entering into Aries season. This should be fun, right? Because the sun has been in this space of darkness, really revealing, shedding a lot of light on a lot of things, right? And with that, it is also, so, and with that, it's also really bringing out the, those hidden things of what it is that we haven't been seeing. Perhaps we may have um, been acknowledging something, feeling some type of way and not having much clarity on it and Pisces season perhaps have um has brought light to that you know so in Aries season it's just all gonna come out you know will this still be the light within um within all this time we haven't had any so during Aries season the sun will be there uh Venus will be there I think Mercury will be there as well because Mercury is going to transit through Pisces and Mercury moves fairly quickly, like within 28 days, I believe. And Chiron's there, a lot of conjuncting energies, Mars is in Gemini. Okay, so things come Aries are going to be moving quickly. A lot of growth is going to be happening um, in Aries season and we'll be experiencing Taurus and Gemini season throughout this spring equinox energy, All right? So this is a lot of uh, coming into possessions, money, finances, the things that we have, relationships, unions, right? Accumulating things and then connecting, relating, you know, building, making decisions for possibly something new, maybe making some corrections on things, checking our perceptions, you know, and seeing things much more clearly, um, but on a mental scale, like really understanding, having the understanding of it. It's almost as if, uh, you know, we've gone through this, through this darkness, through this cosmic energy of Pisces that's been showing us the all, Right, and then coming into pipe, coming into Aries and integrating that into ourselves, utilizing that in Taurus to manifest what we want. And then as we are moving towards doing, taking the action of attaining what we want, then come Gemini, changing any perspectives if we've been seeing something in a certain way that needs to shift a little bit, maybe connecting with people in regards to what it is that we have been building up. So when I was sitting with the energy for spring for fire signs, it really feels like that um, this is gonna be a very nourishing time for fire signs, that this is going to enliven and enlighten us. I'm an Aries, so um, in a very, not, I don't want to say it's not going to be anything that's like abrasive, but something very nurturing, something very nourishing, something very confirming for us um, in relation and connection to ourselves, you know, because spring is a lot about the self. It's, it's about personal, it's personal energy there, Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Granted, Gemini does involve other people, and so does Taurus, but not really. So, definitely going to be taking some time and uh, con just connecting more with ourselves on a much more um, enlightening way, way of awakening, like uh, in, again, integrating what it is that we have been learning and, and seeing in the choices it is that we have made up until this point and how it is that that has affected us and whether that is for good or 
not, you know? So yes, I'm gonna leave it there. And we're gonna go ahead and get into this Aries energy. So uh, let's get into it. I am, let me see. Yeah, so I'm just gonna start pulling the cards. So we have for spring, I'm using um, these astrology cards to represent each half of the energy. So the first half we have nourish, and this is March and in, in April. So during this time, um, oh wow, you know what? And when I pulled out these cards I didn't even think about the fact that uh this is nourish when I was feeling what I was feeling like oh yeah nourishing <laughs> so yes this first half of um spring is going to be very nourishing uh for us for you Aries you know and really the new seeds that you've planted if you have planted any are really going to be coming in and supporting you and growth that is coming forward right come second half of spring because in the second half we have here growth we basically give me one second okay maybe i didn't need that light at all <laughs> so in the second half of spring we have a growth energy um so this will be the ending of half of taurus the beginning in the rest of gemini this will be um, May and June, right? So this is where things will begin to be, will begin to flourish in a sense, begin to sprout itself. The buds, the leaves will begin to start budding, you know, and we'll come into the space of really, um, seeing our hard work paying off all the, the nurturing that we have put into, um, the seeds that we have planted, you, we will see that pay off. So let's get into this. So for Aries spirit, what would you like for them to know during this time of spring? Has a, that light was bright and sitting in front of a window. <laughs> okay, so Aries spirit, what would you like for Aries to know at this time? What would you, what insight, what guidance do you have for Aries March, April, May, and June of 2021? And spring energy. So I'm going to pull two cards for each month. And then pull some oracle cards in support of those. Aries, Spirit, what would you like, Aries? No, let's see. March. April. Second half, May, June, for Aries. Okay, Aries. So let's get into these cards. <laughs> so in the first half of, um, of spring, it, it feels like you are going to just be coming into a space of, um, getting more aligned and more balanced into your own mind, into your own heart as well. You know, kind of putting down any um, multiple ways of thinking that have not, that is just not working anymore, right? Especially in regards to um, things that uh, kind of hinder you from being able to expand, being able to really uh, flourish in the way in which it is that you want, right? Because we're in this space of, of nurturing, nourishing ourselves, our lives, 
what we're building, right? So the first card that comes up here is the Two of Pentacles. And with the Two of Pentacles, this is basically, it speaks about a juggling act, all right? It speaks about really um, kind of pulled in, in two ends where, you know, kind of needing some, a balance, almost like a work-life balance. Are you having fun? And if not, why not? Let, let's start having some fun. But if that's not the case, this could be more of a mind and, and heart energy, you know, really a need to just balance out how it is that you're feeling getting aligned in that energy, in, the, in that space, right? Because in March, what also comes up here is the King of Cups. And so with the King of Cups, this is very much so a, it's about the self emotional maturity, connecting with people. How, how are you feeling about being in connection with people? How are you feeling about this, um, this role in which it is that we all hold in some capacity of um, holding space for others? You know, and perhaps it's a need to get into some idea or some form of balance when it comes to uh, showing up for another and showing up for yourself. You know, really making sure that you're nurturing and taking care of yourself and not letting um, things delude you in a way that is going to stop you from really um, being able to go the long haul, right? So it's a lot about self-care, about nourishment, Aries. So a, a lot of a need to take a lot of time, a lot of care into the self, right? You have a lot of pinnacles here in this first half. Um, in um, April, the first card you have is the Ace of Pentacles. So some new opportunities may be coming your way. It may bring um, some work it is that needs to be done, right? So that's why it's going to be really important in March to make sure that you're really taking care of yourself, taking care of your needs, taking care also, um, what is the word? Cultivating, recognizing where it is. Um, how it is that you give, but also how it is that you receive, right? And making sure that is balanced, making sure what it is that um, you do for another, it's not necessarily done for you, but it is re reciprocated in some form or fashion, right? In a way that is um, in a more heightened space of energy, like mm, that, on a like on a soul level kind of thing like so is this draining your energy or is it giving to you it doesn't necessarily have to be of a physical manner now in april also here have the seven of pentacles so this new opportunity is definitely going to put you in a space where you're really going to have to put some work in right but it is preparing you for a harvest that's coming uh preparing you for uh, a greater sense of fruition because what it, it seems like what it is that you're doing um what it is that you're going after one is soul based but two it's of your legacy right this is this is something that's going to last for a really long time right so this opportunity may not necessarily come through someone else it could we have this king of cups here he could be offering his cup of love or you know, just someone who represents that type of King of Cups energy. But in reality, this can literally just feeling emotionally at home within yourself and a need to really cultivate, working on cultivating that energy, always in that space of making sure home is okay before anything else, right? Because if you're, if everything around you is discombobulated, it's going to be difficult to really um, not necessarily function, but enjoy, have that fun, um, feel that spark that is needed in order to really um, flourish come summertime, All right? So for the second half of, hmm, yeah, so, okay. The way I just line these cards up, so it, it looks like there may be there may be someone a, a someone offering their heart to you in a way that is going to bring in some type of um, financial opportunity, some type of work as well. Um, this could be 
of a, a water sign, but this really feels more like it's something soul based, something like a um, like soul family kind of energy, right? Like a um, soul mate kind of energy, but not necessarily in a relationship, love relationship, but as far as work goes, right? Somebody that you can build something long term. Now this, if, if you are a woman, this can just simply be speaking about you building life, building a family with your man. And if you're a man, this can just be speaking of you building life, building family with your woman. She's very mature in her emotions. She knows how to comfort, knows how to hold space, knows how to um, be fully in the home, right? So then moving forward with the second half of spring, come um, May and June. So in May, we have something, something is changing in May. So once Gemini season comes, it's like you, there's some choices been made and things are, are changing, All right? Because the first card we have here is the chariot card. And with the chariot card, it speaks about activation of will, but this is a heart-based kind of um action it is motivated based off of your desires right and what it is that you also want and need it's about your security making sure that those things are had and um possible you know but something is shifting around that something you know it's a faded thing so based off of how you how it is that you've been responding to life responding to what is yours to take care of and all of those things um it's going to take an act of will motivation to to make sure it is what it is what you want it to be all right because then here we have the tower card come may so something whatever has not been so it's almost like this this if you have been in a secure foundation um or what you have idealized as secure that is going to be changing into something that is more fitting to your desires, to your wants, to your needs, right? But if you have been working toward building that foundation, then it's gonna be that tower moment that happens that brings it all together, that, that kind of um, show improves in a sense and really allow you to um, be able to move forward with your plans, with, with your heart's desire, you know, and really make that happen. Now, come June, ending out spring, we have the seer card here. So it's almost as if you're going to be able to recognize all the pieces are going to come, come together. You're going to be able to, in a sense, see, see the future, see what's coming from this point, you know. Um, ooh. Okay, so many things are coming right now. So some of you will be having a very unexpected experience that kind of um, gets you in this space of being unsure, right? Because it's gonna show you something. You're gonna be able to see something that you weren't seeing before, right? So things may be shifting a little bit, that tower moment, um, maybe showing you either something better right or or something that that kind of blindsided you in a sense you thought something was going to be secure something that was going to be um fundamentally grounded and it, it it more or less it may not it could or may not be that so then here in june we have the knight of cups with the seer and I say that it seems it, it kind of feels like something goes backward in a sense because we started out the spring with the King of Cups and then we're ending the spring with the Knight of Cups. So granted, it, it may not necessarily go backward. It might just rev up whatever's changing the passion within the existence of reality, whatever it is that's happening for you in your life right? Um, but it's going to allow you to see a greater opportunity within relationship, within um, with what it is that you have. Granted, if it shows up as you feeling a little bit unsure, um, what is, 
it's almost as if you need to kind of have trust and faith and continue forward regardless of what it is that you're seeing because just because you see something right now at this moment things change so that the future is always ever in flow with whatever is happening right in this moment right but things can also change in the moment. So that then changes the future as well. It may not necessarily be anything negative, but in reality, um, with this tower moment coming up, uh, it's definitely going to show you something that is going to make things make sense in a different way than it has before. Like it, it, it might just open your heart a little bit more than it has been. You know, because in the second half of um, the second half of spring, you have really a lot of heart based energy here, you know, really feeling within feeling at home, you know, and it's just it's really supportive of you in being able to um, stand the test. Right, because everything is sometimes like a test and the test of time so that um, you can give things to pan themselves out. But we're going to keep pulling, um, pull some Oracle cards for this energy here. I'm going to pull one Oracle for the first half, one for the second half. Mm -hmm. oh yeah it's some understanding that's that's happening here some type of perception it is that's being held to come that second um that second half because it's it's almost as if you start off the spring with this this great mind um of feeling good about what comes um what's coming what's here and then at the end of spring things kind of uh know, they don't necessarily taper off it, it just i don't know it feels more like it's a pat as about passion a passionate thing like very romantic in a sense Maybe you may be seeing, if you are with someone, um, seeing them in a very romantic sense in a way that you never have before, right? That could be happening, seeing those that you are in connection with in a way that you never have before. Um, and if you're single, there may be somebody coming in of, of water sign, but it could just be of love and relationships for your second half of spring. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So regardless of whatever it is that you're thinking you're not doing, you're already doing it because that's here. Right. And then outside of that, we have for the first half of spring, we have sisterhood of the rose. Right. So it's about beauty and devotion, priestess, mystic and teacher. Right. So this is basically about being devoted to what it is that you're building in this first half, right? Because things are are new, they're budding, right? And you're, you're really having to be in the space of nourishing it. Focus on the beauty that's around you, focusing on building beauty within your life with around, surrounding you, right? The beauty of what it is that you live in, beauty within your relationships, beauty within your work with your children, you know, all of those things and really focus on um, the higher perspective of all things, the higher perspective of anything, right, that you experience in your life. And maybe um, you may be coming into the space of being a teacher, being some type of mystic or priestess um, in regards to what it is that you're building, right? It might be something very spiritual that you're, that you are building here you know, and it's going to bring a lot of beauty into your life. It's going to really bring you a great offering of love. And so in the second half, um, 
here we have Lumeria creating heaven on earth. So it's definitely, you know, going to be seeing something differently in a way that you haven't before, feeling very passionate about life, um, feeling very motivated about life, and really allowing things to let go and release of just what hasn't been working, what is no longer serving this great that you see for your life you know there is something um perhaps of the heart that is gonna be leaving um any any type of especially in regards to your faith right because the seer it has all to it's all to do with belief and just as well as love is tr with trust and so and that may really be a turning point for you come at the second half of spring so let's see what else. I'll pull one of these cards. What else is here for Aries? So it's definitely spring is going to be very, very beautiful for you, Aries. Very nourishing, you know, and know that anything that happens that it's like unforeseen and it feels as if it is um it feels as if it, it is kind of like out of the blue and or an unfortunate circumstance it's not that it's you know always deeper than the obvious okay so let's see Aries the sorcerer wow yes so the sorcerer card comes up for Aries so the sorcerer is a very dark kind of energy, right? It is. It speaks about what is this a twelve? So this is the hanged man energy. So this is about what it is that you have not been seeing clearly. What it is that you have your judgment of has been clouded based off of any type of shadows, any type of um, uh, beliefs. It is that you have been holding on to that don't serve your highest good. That don't serve you in a way that really allows you to be able to flourish to see the light you know she only has a very little bit of light standing there behind her and it, it's almost it's a very it can be a very detrimental energy right so you may be really walking away from this within you but also walking away from um the type of relationships within your life that exude this energy all right so almost seeing seeing the truth of the matter in regards to all of those aspects in life in general you know and really just coming out on the other side uh feeling stable feeling secure and knowing that all things that happen are really for the best you know instead of um being in this space of you know seeing things as a problem if that's the best way and so if that's the best way to put it and this energy is really going to support you in fully aligning your chakras feeling very whole within right because when the sorcerer comes up it's almost the light is missing honestly um it's a lot of deception at play here and most of the time we just be deceiving ourselves <laughs> you know so it's just like this is that's being casted out in a way that is uh, creating freedom in the self sovereignty of the self. Um, yeah, because it, it's about looking at your beliefs of scarcity, letting go of any type of um, karma that has been cultivated within the family, right? That has brought you to this place of seeing things this way. Spring is, you are pulling yourself out of this. Um, so a lot of abundance is happening here and it's going to start in the first half of spring like you may really be getting like money money come the beginning of spring all right and the second half just really enjoying that really seeing life through a different lens recognizing what it is that you are that you are creating heaven for yourself you know so Let's see. Spirit, what else is here? Let's see. 
So the mermaid cards here, we have the Rusalka. The Rusalka. I hope that this camera, this light, this window. All right. So he says your ideal belief weight, your ideal and belief weight created in the distance, call it and it will come. So this is sun card energy. So this is about magnetism. This is about attraction, right? Calling in what belongs to you. What is it that you want? What do you idealize? What do you believe to be true? If you hold that belief, if you, it's a dog barking outside. That's interesting. Um, if you believe it to be true, it shall be. The Rusaka, excuse me, she speaks about fun. Adaptability is your key to success. A powerful wave of bright circumstances predicted for you by the Rusaka who emerge onto land in the summertime in a light robe of mist. Your charm will certainly bewitch a special someone or creating a happening that appears blessed. Because the Russo Cup spell blind passerby by with their sweet mm. singing and beauty. A call you receive from a like-minded person bodes well and leads to fertility because where the Russo call lies, dances, the grass and crops thrive. You will also go to a party, event or reunion indicated by the Russo call calling out to each other while swinging on the trees, singing songs to the rivers and lakes. So you may be reconnecting with some people from the past as well. Um, and just really enjoying, it. spring is gonna be a really wonderful time for you Aries. Like, well, um, really just enjoying life in a way that is going to allow you to um, See things through a new lens in which you have yet to. Feeling very confident in all things. Connecting with people who are very supportive of you. Connecting with those who want to support you. You know, connecting with those you want to support. Connecting with those that you just want to have fun with. That, you know, you have a good time with. Okay. And really just embracing the energy of what is being in that present moment for real. You know, and not so much um, being focused on what isn't or what was, you know, none of that is happening here. Some of you may be also getting pregnant during the spring as well. There may be some uh, new life coming. It is the fertile season, by all means. Have fun, <laughs> you know. So let's see. What else is your spirit? benefit of the doubt so they got benefit of the doubt here and this is in the love and relationships card okay so this kind of speaks to the energy I was feeling as far as um just not being really sure um like the tower moment energy and that kind of changing your sight and what it is that you see in regard in regards to your relationship but it's a need to really give things the benefit of the doubt. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. If you feel like that you are unsure that something is going to work out, going to pan out, you really have to um, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and do it anyway. All right, just just go for it. You know, don't don't think it too much because this is a love and relationship card, right? So relationship with yourself. It says, I believe in the basic goodness of other people and I give them the chance to show it. If they prove me wrong, that's on them. At least I can go to sleep knowing that I practice trust and forgiveness rather than fear and doubt. And later on, if I need to, I can always change my mind and retroactively judge them like it's my career. <laughs> All right, so let people show you who they are and when they do believe them and be open to receiving what else is here spirits what else is here for Aries 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 sweet leaders and rulers and bosses Aries All right. Here is playfulness. Yeah. Spirit really wants you to have fun this spring. We got playfulness here. 
She on her motorcycle. She ready. All right. Stay ready. <laughs> I am I am a playful participant in life and I always have the option to make something fun, something a fun game rather than a heavy burden. Mary Poppins put sugar in medicine for a reason. That lady really knows how to party. Yeah, so when things are starting to get seem like they're starting to get tough a little bit, find the light in it. Find know that there is good there. You know, even if it doesn't seem like it, you can't let your first mind go to, oh, well, what if kind of thing because, or ain't this some shit kind of thing because that is going to create a ripple effect. You know, instead, well, what is, what is here? What's going on? What what's what's good? You know, like what's what's good here? Literally. <laughs> so, let's see. Lots of fun. Come up out of that darkness. Uh, we have the first quarter moon here. So first quarter moon speaks about acting, taking action, um, uh, putting, moving forward in the plans in which it is that you choose. What is it that you're doing for yourself? How do you see yourself? Be that, do that. Don't question it. All right. You even have joy here at the bottom of this deck of what I pull playfulness so really a need to um work on or cultivate or be in that joyful space act on that act on your dreams your desires be in that space don't question it just do it all right it just just do it because it's happening it's here it is just a, a part of even making the, the bad times feel good, you know. Let's see. What else here? How are we closing out this reading for Air Spirit? What is what else the spirit? What else does Aries need to know? Spirit. Aries is of spirit. It represents spirit. Uh, yeah, somebody's getting pregnant um, during the spring, for sure. So we have the queen of feathers. I don't know if y'all can see that well, but so let's see. The queen of feathers speaks about anointment, anointing. It speaks about north, birth, and earth. So this basically speaks about getting um sound within yourself right especially within your mind so recognizing it's about perspective it's about how you see things right it's about how you see things and knowing that 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 mentality is really everything because feathers is air energy it's about order truth and justice what is the truth you know always stick to that um even if it hurts just kind of accept it for what it is so that you can move forward in going because you you know keep facing your true north don't let anyone deter you or any type of ideas or any type of influence allow you to believe that you need to do be doing anything other than facing your own true north right so it also speaks about um stability and permanence so you even have okay the four of wands is here as well in the ten of pentacles is here so really building a foundation that's sustainable, um, that is going to last a very long time, like the rest of your life kind of thing, or if not, like for years, decades kind of energy, and it is going to support you. So just continue to keep doing what it is that you do, what it is that you want to do. It represents solid matter and the structure of the universe. The crystallization of spirit into form, sink into the earth, anoint your body temple with the purest of essential oils of sacred flowers and medicinal herbs. Use small bowls to absorb negative energy. So take small bowls of sea salt, dead sea salt, Himalayan salt, put them in the corners of your house. It will absorb negative energy. Also put it underneath your doormat. Um, also, you can sleep with it by your bed take you salt baths regularly, cleanse yourself regularly, take herbal baths regularly, 
Okay, maybe even take you a clay bath as well. That's really cleansing, really, really nourishing for the skin, for the body in general, you know, for the skin. The skin is our largest organ. It absorbs everything, you know. So sit in something that is is fruitful for the body. Essential oils that really um, support and serve you in the manner of the space in which it is that you are in, right? So it is, it's a lot of, of rejuvenation, regeneration happening for you, Aries, come spring, um, and really the beginning of creating this life that you, in a sense, have always wanted. So Aries, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I'm sending you so much love. I hope that this was helpful and I will see y'all in the summertime. All right, we are off to Leo. Okay, bye y'all. Hey Leo, so happy spring. We are about to get into your energy for this season that we have coming up starting on March 20th, which is tomorrow um, as I'm recording this. So Leo, when I was sitting with your energy, you guys are coming in very loud, <laughs> okay? Loud and just like, this. here I am. This is me. That's it. Don't ask me no questions, basically. <laughs> So I feel like that's gonna that's gonna be very exciting for Leo. Leos, you know, y'all love to be seen, love to, um, and people love to see y'all. Let's be honest, everybody loves to see uh, loves to see Leo. People feel like that Leos do what they do because they're trying to get attention, but Leos just being themselves and the attention is drawn to them. Very attractive. It's sun energy, right? The if you have a flower and it is in a room, it's going to literally move to where that spot of the sun is, even if it can't directly get to it. If it's light there, if the sunlight is there, it feels it, it goes toward it. That's Leo energy, you know? So let's go ahead and pull these cards and see what y'all are going on. So Spirit, what would you like to Leo to know? In this spring energy for them. Like very, just very noticeable. You don't, Leo, you don't have to do a lot. You just need to do you, be you. That's it, that's all you need, honestly. Leo spirit. Leo, what is here for Leo? Some Leos are starting new relationships as well. March. Hmm. So the first card that came out here is the Justice card. So something's coming to balance whether that's within you or around you, you are receiving some type of due, some type of payback, payoff. Wow. By being yourself, right? Because then the strength card comes out. We have the justice card and the strength card here for you, Leo. So whatever it is that you have really been putting effort into, um, if it's like been some type of legal manner, that is paying off for you um it's coming to you you're attracting it to you based off of the effort it is that you put into it based off of the knowledge and the knowing it is that you have put into it you know and really aligning get having chosen to get into alignment with yourself with who it is that you are right and even in regards to your relationships as well that is really um having the courage to do that is, is facilitating. It's like you're closing out new cycles and so that you can walk through a new doorway. Yeah, okay, Leo. So 
Um, yeah, so some new relationship is also coming in for Leos and Leos who are already in a relationship. Uh, something really benevolent is about to manifest for you and your significant other because we have here uh, two of cups and the three of wands. All right, so two of cups is soul union, whether that is with a soulmate or just with yourself and three of wands is your ships are coming in. You know, things are manifesting or get, preparing to manifest for you. You are about to see some payoff in that. So this can also be in the work you do as well, especially um, if you do things that, that help others, that kind of bring some sense of service to another, some type of um, solace to another person. So for instance, if you're in um, like a psychology field or something like that, um, or if you do something in regards to um, with words, let me see. What else is here, Spirit? <clears throat> March, April, May. Let's see what uh, what is here for May. Yeah. So the sun is really out for you, Leo. <laughs> like you were really doing all it is that needs to be done in order for you to um, make it happen, in order for those ships to come in, in order for what it is that you have been actively um, maneuvering towards. It's like you're that foot that's been out the door and one that's in the other, you're gonna either choose to come out the door and close it or finally walk into it. Regardless, it's it's going to take the strength and courage, but it will happen and it's going to bring you into the soul union that is going to um, put you in a space that's really supporting you in, in calling in what it is that your soul wants, what you want on a spiritual level, you know, <clears throat> made for Leo spirit, made, okay. So there is something, okay. So in May, you may just be taking a pause. You know, perhaps you have been putting in a lot of work in the first half of spring and just need some time to rest, right? Some time to heal, some time to meditate because here we have the hanged man and then we have the four of swords, right? So this is, uh, speaks about surrendering. It also, it speaks about surrendering to perceptions of what you thought something was, right? And it, it feels like what you what you thought something was was much more than what you anticipated. Not in a bad way, in a good way. Um, it, it's almost like you, it feels like payoff. Again, payoff keeps coming up. June. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then in June, we have the lover's card. So a decision is made. The North Node is in Leo. So it is like you have been moving forward toward destiny. You know, in, in, in May, you've taken this time to kind of rest, not saying that you still won't be out but you definitely will be taking time to kind of focus on yourself, um, trying to like kind of getting your bearings together so that you can move forward into this because you have the lover's card here with the lover's card with the ace of swords. And so that is like you are literally walking into a new like this new sense of inspiration is coming to you after you have uh, taken the time to rest in May, then in June, this is coming up and really allowing you to be able to um, continue to move forward with what has come already come in for you, right? And build that stability with that, through that, right? So it's, it's like, you know how sometimes you get to doing something, you're like, oh, I'm gonna add something to it. This stuff is coming in, I can add something to it. But in May, it's like you're 
you're like, okay, no, I need to rest first. And in resting, it gives you the opportunity to um, really come into this, this lover's energy, this space of wholeness. Not only are you, um, it's almost like you have embodied this sense of wholeness, right? And um, this really inspiring you to live life more uh, expeditiously, <laughs> all right? <clears throat> because whatever perspective, especially perspective of yourself that you have been holding, it's totally shifting. And that is the new inspiration, like the new fire under your belly kind of thing that in your belly that's supporting you in um, really moving forward with this energy. And perhaps there may be a decision to be made, but in June, you may definitely meet somebody if you aren't already with this person. Because um, this can be forward movement into a relationship as well. This can, yeah, the start of, it's definitely the start of something new or the start of doing something in a new way, kind of. But it is definitely, um, yeah, follow, following your intuition throughout these months is what is going to support you in really being able to expand on these things. It's just, you know, have courage in what is find the strength within yourself, the will, the motivation within yourself to really be able to um, protect your boundaries so that what is coming to you, you do, are not giving too much away. Yeah, because come the second half of spring, your perspective is is shifting. It's shifting greatly in a way that is allowing you to really um, come to terms with something it is that you've been believing up until this time. It's almost as if you got to start the year faking it. I mean, start the the year right, the astrological year, the new year. Um, faking it until you make it kind of thing and then you make it and you kind of blown away by what it is that it actually that has actually come and it's taking taking you a moment that you need to just kind of sit with yourself kind of surrender to the moment to the space that you are in yeah so a lot of some expanding happening within your relationships, especially your work relationships. Especially if you do any work on like um, a spiritual level or like a beauty level or um, in, in film, things like that. Much expansion happening there. First half of spring spirit. Yeah, so the first half of spring you have here the inner temple, and this speaks about devotion. Tune into the portal of your heart, right? So you have this justice, the strength card, the two of cups, and the three of wands. So it's all about really listening to that heart space, what it is that you truly want, because strength it's ruled by Leo, right? Um, well, it's ruled by by Leo. It's a Leo card, and so this is all about being inspired and taking action through that, doing what it is that needs to be done so that you can manifest your inspirations and really call that in into yourself. But the only way that it's like, it's, you're done with um, finding any resource outside of yourself to let you know what's the right step. It's all within you. It's important to really tap in and tune in with the self. What is that that you're feeling? What it is that you desire, and what were what is your goal really? And continuing to move forward in that, and what what feels like the right direction in that pool, because that is what is going to guide you to where it is that you're going and offer you what it is that you 
have been building to again pay off you if you have you've already been doing this because for these two for this justice card and the strength card to be coming up is the first cards of spring um that's fate fate has been the response fate is your response to um life to to what's been happening what's been going on to you and it's paying off all right because Leo is the giver, the giver of good tidings, the giver of gifts, the giver of love, um, the giver of romance, and the giver of sex. And so these things are, it's important to continue to go with where you are feeling called to, because that's the right direction. And it is, it's a, it's a lot of heart energy here. Um, very even homey energy so what feels at home to you what makes you feel good literally what makes you feel good like comforted that doesn't mean get into this comfortable space where you're stagnant but focusing on building that home within as well and doing what it is that makes you feel at home within so this is basically not letting anyone tell you who you are, what you should be doing, or anything like that, because that is out here. <laughs> it's out here strong, all right? And everybody thinks they know what's best for everybody, but you know. You're the only one who knows, all right? So let's see. Don't let nobody tell you who you are. Second half of spring spirit for Leo. What else is here for Leo? Soul family. Wow. Yeah, okay, so the second half of spring, you got the soul family here, and this is coming out with, you know, the hangman, the four swords, the lovers, and the ace of wands, so you have people here supporting you, so when things get a little heavy, when things get a little, um, like, I just need a break, it, it's going to be important to have these people around you to help you continue to continue to still moving forward but not in a way that you are having to exert so much energy because of the beginning of spring you are going to have to exert a lot of energy with that justice card coming out and that um that justice card coming out and that strength card coming out like that's very uh expansive it's, it's all about that's values and having things and in in cultivating things um creating things and in just a lot of movement um and then you have that three of wands there so it's kind of like the three of wands kind of speaks of a pause but it's not really that is mars i think that's mars in leo it's a sun in aries oh <laughs> thought that was Mars and Leo. Either way, you will be doing a lot of moving this first half of the season, right? So make sure that you are also remembering to cultivate your relationships even while you're busy. Because again, these are the people who are going to help support you in continuing to move forward, continuing to expand within your life, right? You have people there who you can lean on, who you can just talk to if you need to. Um, who you can just kick the shit with, all right, and don't have to focus on all the things that you have been focusing on, right, and giving you a little space and leeway that can offer you that leeway that's going to give you that opportunity to rest. This could be just as easily as the your family that you live with, you know, um, your lover, your significant other. So let's see, what else is your spirit? What else is here for? Okay, so let's see what else is here, Spirit. What else do you have for Leo for the spring season? What is here for Leo Spirit for spring season? <coughs> Excuse me. Leo spirit. What else is here for Leo? Okay. Leo, 
so crazy. Yes, so definitely, you are definitely seeing yourself different come spring, Leo. You got the serpent card here. And the serpent speaks about new skin. It also speaks about being vulnerable because you're showing up in this new way that you never have before, really. Granted, you may already have been starting to do this, but in reality, um, you know, it takes time to get comfortable into something which still makes it new, right? And the serpent speaks about that old skin shedding and you really coming out on the other side, a brand new person. Um, and really just honoring who it is that you have become, who it is that you are and really embracing that in a very whole way, honoring all the things that you have experienced up until this point so that you can really do what is yours to do you know it's no other way to put it really this is a 46 10 yeah this is a like the will of fortune card so the will is turning in your favor um <laughs> something is happening here and it is you know it's the least of your of what you've expected um it's a greater than what you've expected, not the least of that. It, it's it's so much more than what you have seen up until this point, what you have thought to be possible. It feels big. And big by whatever means that means for you, you know? However, I don't know, it feels really good though. It really does. But one thing, Leo does not have a problem with this being vulnerable. So, you know, y'all like to tell it like it is. How you feeling? And that's a beautiful thing. Um, but when you're doing something new, it's a little bit different. When you're coming into this new space in yourself, it's a little different. So that is it's happening. Wow. Yes. Then you got the hourglass dolphin here. And it's a number 46. It's the same number as this serpent card. <laughs> okay. It says your achievement is only a matter of time. I'm telling you, whatever. Don't sell yourself short. All right. We're going to read the hourglass dolphin to see all of what is this being is talking about. So the hourglass dolphin speaks about the vision. So it says the hourglass dolphin denotes that you are just in time for something that you wish to achieve. As a reminder of mortality, it expresses the transi trans transitory, I'm saying that wrong, transitory nature of time and it experience, symbolic of an eternal return. It suggests that going home early every night, sleeping and keeping good hours will persuade cosmic forces to create benef beneficial opportunities. An idea's germination in darkness will produce crystallization in the light of day. The cross-shaped spot in the, in the dolphin, in the dolphin's flanks intersects two white areas, indicating that you are wise to divide your time. In doing so, you will enjoy the timeless ecstasy expressed by the shade representing the light of the new day. Um, so this also speaks about really taking care of yourself as well. Um, you know, nourishing yourself, getting a good a not, amount of rest, getting up in the morning and having a really good routine that supports you in like moving through your day, getting things going. So you're feeling good, you're energized, move, you know, get out of, do whatever you need to do to get out of that fixed nature that sleep puts you in, right? Um, so get up, stretch, walk around, listen to some music, however you do it. I don't know. Just do that because that is what is supporting you at this time. And um, also, it's interesting, Aries had that, that whole work-life balance. It's important for you to make sure that you're having a good time with life as well as, um, wow, 
um, I'm reading the bottom mermaid card and it's the siren and talking about uh, the treasure of the day's light is thrown on what could be tomorrow. So that's basically talking about what in the light of the day, like this, this hourglass dolphin, what you do is shining light on tomorrow. It's all about what it is that you're putting in right here, right now at this time. What is it? What, where do you want the light shown in your life on you? You already know, all right? Just, you know, do what, do what needs to be done. Take care of yourself for real. Connect with people who you love, who you don't have to explain yourself to, um, you know, who love you simply just for who you are without any need of uh, whoever is, you know, who sees you for who you are, basically, without you having to express that, without you having to explain that, who respect you as well. But that's what soul family is, right? Because you got boundaries here. And this is in relationships. What else is here? Ownership. Yeah, so ownership, that's at the bottom, but that's a lot about possession. Um, or more so owning up to what it is that you're doing, how you're showing up, and, and what type of effect it is that that has on other people. So paying attention to um, the input that you receive from your output, right? And so boundaries... It says, I claim my right to set healthy boundaries and I allow others to do the same. Sometimes personal space is taken and sometimes it's given. And sometimes if you're on the subway, it's completely disregarded and shamelessly invaded. I guess it depends on the day. But today, set you some boundaries with people who, um, in your relationships, who tend to not have any. You know, don't let people walk over you. Don't, you know, don't let people take advantage of you. Um, don't let people try and tell you who they think you are because they don't know. They they don't know your life. They don't. All right. So set some boundaries in a healthy way. Okay. What else is here for Leo Spirit? impermanent so yeah something things are are definitely changing um and you're probably going to need those boundaries because of where it is that you're going all right because when you start to gain things people want a piece they want some people who you ain't seen in a long time where you come from <laughs> okay so things are um changing for you all things in life the only thing that's constant in life is change um, and permanence is the only permanent thing that truly, really exists. Um, so just be open to flow with the tides as they come and they go. Uh, don't be so caught up in one way of doing things, one way of experiencing things, one way of being in a thing. Um, let go of whatever needs to let go of. Uh, embrace whatever it is that needs to be embraced you know if it's if it's not working that's fine maybe next time not this one you know so let's see it says life is always changing and i drift easily through those changes good and bad as i drift through hard times i can take comfort in knowing that i will leave them behind as i drift away from good times I can take comfort in knowing that more will come my way. Impermanence is an equal opportunity, non-entity. Yes, it truly is. Divine timing. All things happen in divine time. So if something is not happening right as you want it to be, know that it's just a little bit of effort or whatever, however much effort it is that you personally have to put into your, your thing and know that the tide is turning like things are going to change it's not always going to be this way it's just a matter of being patient with that and observing what it is that is actually happening instead of judging it because when we get into judgment our mind goes into all kinds of different places instead of just seeing um, it also creates scenarios. We want to just see the truth in the matter so we can move on. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Aries had got the first quarter moon. Leo, you got the third quarter moon. So this is about, um, the third quarter moon is about acceptance and gratitude. So there's definitely something that is, whatever's changing, whatever's coming, you are going to be finding much gratitude in it. You know, you're going to want to share this with others. You're a Leo. Y'all love to give. Y'all love to share. All right. So um, it's definitely the, the, the tide is turning. Definitely. Because the third quarter moon they say this is like a very negative moon, bad things happen. I've watched a lot of different witchy shows that talk about how the waning moon is, <laughs> the third quarter moon is so detrimental or whatever, but it really based, it's based on you, right? What are you putting in, in that response with whatever it is with uh, output? You know, so what is that? What does that look like for you? And, you know, can you be in gratitude for what is here, what is coming, what it is that you don't, you can't see right now at this time? Because things are truly expanding right now. As long as you continue to do what you need to do and lead in your life, um, you will definitely, it will it's happening all right you on the path on the journey it just i need to kind of uh believe magician and healing what is this my odds relationships judgment that's interesting y'all have a lot of judgment energy here um with this justice card what else this boundaries card impermanence it's a lot about the mind energy in your relationships and it may be a very strong need to set um some type of law up surrounding you right because this is the can you see that i don't know that is the eight of lotuses um the eight of lotuses in this lotus deck is Ma'at. Ma'at is the law keeper of the 48 laws um, in the comedic tradition. I guess we could call it that. Um, and she basically gives the law of what should be. It's not so much about what should not be because the 48 laws of, not the 48 laws of power, the 48 comedic laws, they, um, they focus on the good, on what it is I did, what it is I'm doing, how it is that I'm feeling, how it is that I'm seeing, how it is I'm thinking. You know, they're very much so affirmations, right? So really taking the time to focus on truth. This is also an Aquarius ruled energy. So Jupiter and Saturn is there. So this is about long-term, long-lasting things. So maybe um, you will also be calling in, um, cause my, I, she also has a lot to do with the scales in regards to, um, balance, right? And what is fair, what is truth, what is order. So finding out the truth in those surrounding you, what that actually is, you know, where it is that you truly belong, who truly belongs around you as well. So she also speaks about um, sobriety and propriety. So wanting to be sober of the mind, you know, and really focus on the righteousness of yourself. And that's what Leo is. Leo is very righteous, <laughs> self-righteous. This is what this card is about. It's about truth and order, harmony, balance. Um, and also eliminating dysfunctional, disjointed relationships in one's life. So if there is anyone in your life who is just toxic in a sense that they make you feel uncomfortable, they don't make you feel um, worthy, again, that whole respect thing, then if they don't bring any type of harmony for, to your life, it's really time to just uh let them drift away if they cause any type of confusion discord if they bring out imbalance where there has always been order 
it's, it's, it's just time to go. Don't let no relationship into your life that, that also facilitates that as well. Um, it also speaks about self-awakening, renewal, and self-evaluation, right? So this is, again, speaking about seeing yourself in this light that you had no idea of before. <laughs> like, granted, you may have felt this, that it could be possible, but you weren't necessarily sure. You weren't in the space of recognizing that it was real or really having the physical experience of seeing the reality of this. And this spring, you do, Leo. So, Leo, I'm going to leave it here. I am sending you so much love. I hope that this was helpful. And let me know how spring goes for y'all. All right. I'll see y'all in the summertime. Hey, Sagittarius. So we are about to get into your spring equinox reading. I am just lighting some cedar, getting the energy clear. We have already done Aries and Leo, but if you use the timestamp, you didn't watch those. So <laughs> we are just going to go ahead and get into it. Um, what I got while I was just sitting with y'all's energy, um, what came up was don't, don't let the egg break before you're ready to crack it. Don't, it's like basically about taking your time, right? So uh, doing things in a way, in a very gentle, gentle way, right? Because eggs are fragile. So really, uh, allowing things to go step by step I guess you could say and not step by step in the sense that okay I need to do this first and do this first but more so like let me gently handle this let me walk slowly almost like you know that game um during when you're in school grade school and um you have the not the assemblies, but like the track and field stuff. And then they have the games and stuff and they have where the kids or maybe people play this game as well at family reunions, having the egg on the spoon kind of thing, taking your time. Uh, you know, it's in y'all's nature to really want to do things quickly. Like, ah, let's go. this one I'm going to do, you know, but <laughs> sometimes we just got to take our time, you know, and know and trust that things are still going to continue to pan out the way in which we know they will, that we feel they will, that we believe them to be panning out. So yes, that is what I have for you guys. But let's see what cards say, what spirit has to say here. Or I should say what spirit has to say for the card. Great spirit. Who would you like Sagittarius to know for? This spring energy of March through June. What would you like? Sagittarius. 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 Four thirty-four on my clock. So maybe see what that angel number has for you. <laughs> what they are saying. That's serious. For March. So the first card that's coming out is the Queen of Swords for you. So this is about one using your voice, that throat chakra energy but fairness, balance, truth. It's Libra energy as well. Um, <clears throat> it's about your mind, your perspective, you know, and really um, finding love within how it is that you communicate. Granted, in the original tarot, Rider Waite deck, well, that's not the original, but within that deck, um, it speaks of, 
the queen of swords basically um kind of being this astute kind of woman like no care about your feelings i don't care about your feelings but it's a woman it's feminine energy libra is ruled by venus so in a sense she does she can be very passive and um or receptive into her listening of what another person has to say what it is that they are trying to convey um but also seeing things from a higher perspective, wanting the highest perspective in that thing. March for Sagittarius. The moon, okay. So there may be some things in regards to women, maybe your mother, maybe your family, um, and having to be clear with them about something, maybe needing to express yourself. The queen of swords is also the divorcee. She's the woman, the single, like the single queen out of the bunch in a sense because she's more focused on um, truth and, and words and love, um, but more so getting, getting the truth, getting clear on any kind of illusions here because we have the moon card that came out here with the queen of swords. So the moon is Pisces energy, right? So um Perhaps you may have a Pisces coming into your life that is bringing some type of truth or maybe some type of spiritual um, interest that has been gathered, garnered, uh, taking interest of, right? That is really allowing you to see the truth of something that you weren't, that you hadn't been before. And it may have to do in regards to women, in regards to um the feminine energy of things, you know, and really clearing up any type of deceptions, any type of illusions that is going to help you make a, a choice that will support you in aligning to your personal truth and what that looks like within your yin nature or your feminine nature if you're a woman, right? So your yin nature if you're a man in your feminine nature of your woman um this can also speak about uh being able to really i don't know if i said that already make a choice make a choice in regards to um kind of how it is that you want to go about carrying out your own personal legacy and what that looks like for you um and really just almost in a sense bringing justice to your family whether that is your family line um, or just your, your, your family that you have, your immediate family, your family that you're married into, that you, people you built a family with kind of energy. It's gonna also be about you surrendering to something. You may have to find, you may find yourself needing to surrender to some truth and in that have to sacrifice something in order to really be able to align with um with a sense of fairness in regards to everyone involved all right so at the same time this can also speak about um dreams coming to fruition things that you have been thinking about that you really wanting to um, manifest and you being illuminated this path that's gonna take you down the road that you need to go into. Um, granted, there could be somebody, you may be finding the truth out about someone um, in, in your life, or you may be facing a truth about a way that you feel about someone in your life as well. March. What's here in April spirit? Let's see. We'll come back to that. Because it's more there. Ah, the truth, it's also helping you pull yourself out of any type of uh like mental prison it is that you've been in, that you've kind of been trapped in, one way of perceiving things, any type of um a perception it is that's kind of been diluting what it is that you are able to actually see clearly, right? But see within a, a, a God sense, you know? 
people. The Sagittarius, people. Oh, wow. You got similar energy as uh, Leo. This stuff is set different. So in April, you have the Three of Wands, which is, um, this is your ships coming in, like things that you've been working toward. These things are, are beginning to, you're being able to see the fruition of them. You see them up from the coast, like, okay, here it comes. I see it, you know, and that is coming forward. But you also have the strength card here. And so it's not going to be like a right away thing. But in April, you're going to be able to start seeing some type of uh, result from it. But it's a, it, you are going to have to stay um, steadfast in the work it is that's being done that needs to be done. So it seems like this Libra moon energy, these women, they're really... Um, Whoever this is in your life is it, setting you in a place that's uh, supporting you in the in ushering these things into your life, which you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to um, activate your will, like really be uh, consistent with what it is that you are wanting to call that is coming into your world so that it can become the grand thing that it already is, right? It's just the the work that needs to be done right you may also be receiving um some kind of gift or gifts in um april as well for the work it is that you have been doing but a need to really um always continue to align with your sense of inspiration right so whatever ideas whatever dreams it is that you have it's really important that you um, stay in in mind of it, in line with it, so you don't get sidetracked, so you don't get distracted, so that you don't get in a space of fogginess that stops you from being able to see where you're going, where you're headed, like your your vantage point kind of energy. Where, what is here in May for Sagittarius? for Sagittarius spirit might have a Leo show up. So you have Lever, Pisces, and Leo energy here. You also have strong Aries energy here as well. So maybe that you have some of those placements, or these are the people that you're going to be connecting with that are going to be supporting you in that. Um really allowing you to manifest in a sense their support through their support may spirit so in may you have the three of cups coming out here so it's going to be a time to celebrate so these ships did come in they came through <laughs> okay and it's time to celebrate it's time to have fun it's time to um to give thanks you know it's time to come together with those that you love so that you can um really enjoy your, the, what's come to you what's come to life for you and what has grown for you what else is here you may spirit seven of pentacles yeah so three of cups with the seven of pentacles the work it is that you've been putting in has basically um is it, it, paid off you are like you get this break in a sense this pause it seems like um for all of us, at least the fire signs, uh, come May is like we are resting, meditating, having a little bit more fun, letting loose a little bit, not not focusing so much on the work, but um, more so being focused on the celebration of that, you know. But there, it seems that there is still a little bit more work to do, you know, and but it's at a pause at this time you are getting ready to harvest something bigger something more than what has already uh come forward to you Spirit, what is happening in june as spring is ending june for sagittarius yeah oh wow <laughs> so then you have here the seven of cups, right? So you have all these ideas, you know, feeling very 
um, fantastical about what it is that you want to bring in, all the different things that you can do with what has just come about. You know, you got this little pause happening in May with all the effort it is that you've been putting in, all this work toward mastery, whether that's been of the self or some type of business venture or what have you, you know, and then you're like, okay, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, right? And whatever it is that you choose to do, you know, it is coming about because you have here the nine of pinnacles here. And the nine of pentacles is basically saying like you, your ideas and your acting on them has brought you this sense of fulfillment. It could also, what I'm hearing is that there may be some sense of being unsure that you can really fulfill, um, like wear these shoes in a sense and being able to really manifest this and make it happen, right? I think this pause in May may have you put you in this place of being a, like a little bit unsure or disillusioned in a sense when it comes to what it is that is for you to do. Because with these people showing up, it may se it seems like that there may be somebody putting in their sense of opinion on how you should go about further in doing what it is that you're doing, whether that is with your life, your family, your home, yourself, your business. Um, but what this nine of pentacles coming through with this seven of cups is saying like, no, you need to do it your own way. However it is that you've been doing it, what you what has gotten you here will continue to carry you. And when it's time for you to do something differently, then you will, because seven of cups also speaks about other people um causing confusion right because it is um it's cups it's relationships it's ideas it's 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 intuition as well so that's another thing really a need to follow your intuition as well let um all right because something is about to come undone in regards to um what it is that you have like the foundation it is that you've kind of been building upon it's like it's worn so it's time to do it differently, right? Do something from, from the heart, something with joy, something that's fun, you know? And um, the only way you're gonna be able to do it is this it's true to you. You know, nobody else can tell you how or what it is that is really gonna work for you. Granted, you can always get guidance, right? You can always get help from spirit. You can always ask for advice, but if you're not asking for nobody advice and people putting in their input, like, no, that's not what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Thank you for your advice, though, but no, no, thank you. You know, like, <laughs> mind your business. So, yes, because it's bringing forth, you have this new opportunity um, that's, that's building for you in a way that is going to provide you some stability, some type of uh, sustainability as well. So what you want, you will have. Um, it's just a, a matter of sticking to what it is that you believe that you should be doing. That's when it's coming. It's not really about how anybody else says that you should be doing it. Uh, again, unless you ask somebody for their advice. But if you're not asking people for their input, mm -mm. kindly tell them I'm not interested because uh, that's just going to create a lot of confusion for you in in, in and put you in this space of not seeing things in the way that you need to see them in order to align with what you need to do for you. You know, that's what's important. That's the only thing that's important, honestly. So, well, not the only thing, but y'all know what I mean. Let's see. First half of spring spirit. What is here? The Sagittarius. Oh, here it's got this. Maybe you're going to be working with an Aries. Um, if you have some Aries energy, if you didn't listen to that reading, definitely go check it out because Aries got this car in the first half of spring. And when the Sisterhood of the Rose comes out, I like to see this as um, women gathering together, you know, and creating something. So perhaps um, you will be gathering with women. You have this Queen of Swords and Moon energy here and 
going to be creating something together. They're going to be supporting you in, in calling things into your life, bringing things into your life, supporting you in staying um, consistent in, you know, just doing the damn thing, really um, focusing on beauty, devotion, priestess, mystic teacher. So you may have someone close to you that can help you, give you a higher perspective of things right? That may be this queen of swords moon energy here. And then you may um, even have, you may be in the business of beauty, but being devoted to what it is that you're doing is definitely going to support that. Um, maybe someone of a spiritual nature will also be coming in and offering support to you, but this could also just be you, you being this priestess, this mystic, this teacher you know, focusing on the beauty surrounding you and being devoted to your life, to what it is that you're building, what you're bringing forth through your efforts, you know, and using your wisdom, it is that you've gathered up until this point to support you in really being able to, um, you know, make that happen, make it real, make it really real. <laughs> Let's see, second half is going to here. Okay, yes. Oh my goodness. You got don't dim to fit in for the second half of spring. Like I was saying, do what it is that you want to do. All right, Sagittarius, y'all are very sovereign beings. So this is not something that I really even need to be saying to y'all, right? But <laughs> I get how it can be. Sometimes you want to just you know, fit in with your friends right but you ain't got to do that all right because it's what you want to do that is going to support you in making your thing come to life in the way in which it is that you want it's going to offer you those riches that fulfillment that support that you want in your life <coughs> align you to your own personal values nobody else's values it's your values say what you need to say in my throat Yeah, say what you need to say so that, um, you know, just be kind, be honest and be kind, all right? Don't feel like you got to, um, I mean, y'all not really people to be doing anything anybody got to say either, but sometimes y'all are really kind people and like to try out what other people have to offer, but that's not necessary here. You need to um, not be dimming your light in any way, shape or form. Be around people who know you who honor you that's something with the fire sign every all, all of y'all just be around people who really love y'all who really honor your light who it is that you are without you needing to change that in any way shape or form if anyone is not encouraging you to do things in the way that you want to do it, if they give it opinions that you did not ask for ideas that you did not ask for no, because you creating your heaven on earth, not anybody else's, okay? Because when they go and you doing this on your own, they not going to be there to um to have to deal with whatever comes with it, right? It's, that's why, <coughs> oh, that's why it's so important to do things in the way that we want them to do. Because when we get to doing things that other people say that we should be doing them or whatever, especially when we didn't ask for it. We end up having to pay a karma that um, we didn't plan on. Like I didn't ask for this shit. This is not what I want. So in order for you to um, avoid that, do, do you, all right? That's it, just do you. Like you do so well. what else is here what is here for spring for Sagittarius what is this water oh the ghost things okay that's a four fire interesting okay so <clears throat> here we have the ghost dance and so the ghost dance is about seeing things clearly beyond the 
like beyond the fog in a sense you may not be be able to see that at this time um for whatever reason it, it and a lot of times that comes with um trying to see the future instead of just being in that present moment kind of energy and so it also asks you about um it asks you to connect with your ancestors so that you can connect with that abundance within you right because your ancestors they are you right they hold codes information light that belongs to you that you just may not have access to because you have not accessed them all right so uh, definitely take some time to be still and give thanks to your ancestors. Um, light a candle for them, create an altar for them. If you into that, you know, that, that can be really beneficial for your life, especially um, well, all of us. Um, and so it also speaks about uh, nostalgia. And um, it says if you're trapped in a vicious cycle of nostalgia or mourning, Mourning a lost youth or opportunities missed, it's time to make an altar for your ancestors. Um, be wary of being snared in a relationship with someone from the from a past lifetime, as people we love or hurt have a way of reappearing in our lives. There is no learning there anymore. <clears throat> it says the ancestors have a healing message and powerful medicine to offer you. Create a sacred moment at your altar and light it to them. <clears throat> and let their wisdom infuse you. At this stage in your life, you are done repeating a tragic story. Step into abundance that is offered to you. Receive the gifts of those that have come before you and write a new story for your life. So, I don't know, whatever, however you were, if you, by any means, so let's say you have old friends that have come back into your life and, um, or you just have friends in general in your life that you feel like that you have to be something other than yourself. Those are the people who um, are not necessarily there for you. You know, it's time to really uh, detach from those types of relationships because when we hold on to that kind of stuff, it puts us in a certain start of frequency that keeps us blocked and not allowing us to really fully be ourselves, be open to what it is that is for us and the way in which it is that's how, how um, we're, we're doing it or want to do it. Like seriously, always do things in the way in which you want it to really tap into that sovereignty that is you and don't let anybody else make you feel like um, that you should be doing things any different because we all have our own lives. We all do things in the way that we do them because that's what is right for us you know that is what keeps us out of comparison right because this energy feels like a lot of comparison in a sense <clears throat> um and not necessarily you it, it could be both ways you comparing yourself to someone else someone else comparing your, their self to you but when we're not focused on our own bag i guess we would call it then that is what gets us trapped up in um, being triggered by anybody else's something, anything, you know, because it's like we really have to cultivate that space within ourselves that we are grateful for what it is that we have and where it is that we are, even if we are at that, that finish line, right? Because we're never actually at the finish line. There's always something more, especially with Sagittarius. Y'all are, y'all are the pathway basically so it's always happening it's always going always moving right so really be focused on your own thing definitely consult with your ancestors um so that you can tap into your own sense of self and authority so you can be focused on what you're good at and doing that you know and not uh not feeling anything anything else definitely connect with those who are ushering in a sense of beauty into your life who are supporting you and encouraging you to do you in the way that in the grand way that you do you you know you you deserve that um you deserve that be you for real <clears throat> even around people you feel like you can't be yourself be yourself and if they don't like that shit then you that lets you know 
that's it's like, oh, okay, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. Don't nobody have time for that. What is this here, Spirit? What is here for the spring of Sagittarius? Mm, what's going on? Who is around you? All right, so we got the Sith Mermaid. And the Sith Mermaid says the power that creates and sustains you, heals you. All right, so the Sith Mermaid, uh, she speaks about action, taking action, having consistent action. She's kind of similar to that strength card energy in number eight. Um, so about courage, ending old cycles, continuing to go forth um, with all matters, being courageous in that and willful in that. It says, summon the forces of light to aid your life. For prayers are the gateways and charms that disperse darkness. The Sith Mermaid, a dangerous fairy succubus who sucks blood out of a man with whom she has intercourse, represents vampire humans whose presence is draining. They look at life negatively and draw on others' positive energy to invigorate their own destructiveness. Only by keeping a clear mind in constant touch with your intuition and psyche will you avoid losing sight of your everyday goals and long-term ambitions. You may also need to see how much help you can accept without it causing harm to someone who is kindly helping you. So, yeah, definitely... If you recognize your energy levels when you are around people, one, stay in action, stay in constant flux and flow in what it is that you're doing, but pay attention to the energy that you feel when you're around people. How do you feel when they're leaving? How do you feel when they're there? Do you feel, um, do you feel inspired? Do you feel like you, you can do you? you know, do you feel like you can openly be you? Um, or do you feel like that they just came to ruin the party? You know, which one is it? Are they, uh, you know, some, you know, uh, what words am I looking for? Some people do stuff from a place of love and you can feel that even if they're like giving you some type of corrective anything. But some people just do shit from a place of hate. All right. And you can feel that. You can feel when people are draining you. All right, and if you cannot feel that, it's important so that you can tap in and recognize the energy that's surrounding you. If people are are in your life and um, seeing, not seeing the positive in a thing, can't see the positive in something, don't see the bigger picture, you wanna ask yourself, is, are these people worth having over on me? <clears throat> are they shedding light or are they just being negative right and you can you can tell the difference it's easy to tell the difference where else is here for some of the chairs cleansing okay so there is something that needs to be released um especially in regards to relationships or maybe there's a relationship that you just need to let go altogether um that's going to support you so that you can show up and be your best self because you have the fire card here at the bottom and that speaks about um letting letting go what of what doesn't allow you to be in your fire let your fire be activated so throwing those things into fire into the fire so you can let it go you have your cleansing so it says feeling bogged down by the weight of a thousand thoughts feelings boxes of mystery objects lurking in your closet consider this a prescription to clean house mentally, physically, literally, figuratively, and anything else that applies adverbally. It's hard to make room for new connections and experiences when every bit of your emotional space is cluttered with psychic bric-a-brac. So enjoy major guilt, a major guilt-free flush, flush out, and not to worry, you can always find new psychic bric-a-brac in the metaphysical cluttered section of Craigslist. Yeah, so... Um, 
these type of people, um, it, it's time to just kind of let them go uh, and, and move forward in a much lighter way, you know, not those who are always, and it could even just be you, right? Let's not just place this, granted, there are people here, but it, it, it may not be you. It may, I mean, it may just be you. Sometimes we are our own, own worst enemies. So we take the time to cleanse out those parts of ourselves. That's why it's going to be good to um, sit down and commune with the ancestors so you can get a really clear picture on that. And then you have patience here. So whatever is coming about, um, it, it's going to require patience. It's also going to require strength, right? Because you've got the strength card here and you got it on the bottom. And so the patience card says, congratulations, you've been granted more patience. You may start using it right away or much, much later. Waiting a long time is the sort of option now afforded to you by greater patience. Can you believe it? Look at this. You're still reading and you haven't gotten annoyed. You, started, you haven't started getting annoyed yet. Imagine how this patience will transform your life. Imagine how easy it will be to go to the post office. Um, so this also, what also is coming up is perhaps you are open to making new friends, but they are seeming um, to come off like old friends. And that's the energy that needs to, um, so these vampire type of energies are like people who are literally like using you as well, not necessarily just being negative, but people who putting on a false face, who not really being who it is that they say they are um, and not being honest. So definitely, okay, sorry, Sagittarius, my son came out the room, <laughs> but um. Yes, uh, let's see. Yes, just have patience with all the things that are happening. Um, as they, you know, we'll just take some time. Everything takes a little elbow grease. Well, not everything, most things take elbow grease, <laughs> but um, you can give you can offer elbow grease and it can still be in a very easy, um, and pleasant way. If you want it to be, that is. Okay. The moon is out here with you fire signs. Aries got the, the first quarter moon. Leo got the third quarter moon. Y'all got the full moon. So you are realizing something, coming to harvest, a full fruition, a culmination point of um, just understanding of you know, we have a, during the spring, we have a full moon in Libra. So that might be important for you. Um, we also have a full moon in Scorpio. And I think a full moon in Sagittarius. Yes. So um, definitely, <clears throat> I think those are the only full moons. Yeah, they are. So definitely at the full moons, like kind of just check in with yourself, see where you are, how you're feeling, what's going on in life, um, <clears throat> what needs to be let go of so you can continue to move forward and what it is that you're doing, how you're living, what you're building, you know, and recognize and see things for what it is that they truly are, you know, but you'll also be coming into harvest this season as well with where it is that you've been applying your energy. Just, um, you know, uh, those hidden enemies. <clears throat> I don't know. There's something going on here. Definitely um, focus on you. That's all I can say. Because I, I, it, it's somebody something or someone. Um, I mean, and it could also just be you being like an enemy to yourself out of not seeing yourself clearly, right? But um, just take the time to weed out the weeds. 
you know, and only keep what brings a harvest, what brings a bloom, you know, a, a good, a prosperous and great sense of self, you know, that you can fully be you at all times. No competition, no comparison, all right? Because you were creating heaven on earth. Wow, Sagittarius, y'all got this eight of lotus and Leo got this card. And this is my odds. So my aunt, she speaks about judgment and relationships, right? I think, what sign is this? Aquarius, this is about Aquarius. So it's about friendships. Right now we have Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius. So um, that's about expanding. <coughs> but this could also be speaking about work relationships. It's somebody you need something to say to. You got something to say. I've been coughing through your whole reading. I didn't, I don't, I didn't do that through Aries and Leo. Um, be open, be honest about your truth and how it is that you're feeling about things. The Ms. Carr speaks about removing toxic energy from around you, um, practicing a sense of sobriety. Um, let me see something real quick. Okay, I had to look up a word. <laughs> so it speaks about sobriety and propriety. So this is about being clear of mind, you know, focusing on your highest values, what it is that you want for your life and how it is that you want that to look. Um, it's about truth and harmony and balance. So what is your truth? Be comfortable in speaking that and being in that. Um, operate operating from a place that um manifests harmony that's what you're coming into in the spring only focusing on what is yours to focus on for real you know and eliminate any dysfunctional and disjointed relationships in your life eliminate um anything that's toxic it also speaks of judgment you're coming into a spiritual awakening renewal and self-evaluation um, so it feels like that you're just coming into a lot of self-love, um, into a place that you are going to be seeing yourself a lot more clear. And that's, that's what makes me, um, feel like, like the whole hidden enemy, the, 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 that type of energy that it may just be coming from you. Perhaps you haven't been seeing yourself clearly, but granted, you could also be having relationships in your life that do not serve you, all right? This is possibly someone that you have, well, let's say disjointed relationships. Um, so the, that is relationships and that's what came up outright. And Leo was my odd, so it was about the law. Um, more so truth in, in um, order. This card in itself speaks about all that, but with the relationships being upright, um, this is really about a need to um, like put your relationships on trial in a sense and seeing who's there, really there for you and who isn't, you know, um, who's being true to you, who's being truthful to you and who is not, you know, so definitely take the time to work through or just see consult with your ancestors to see the truth in all matters you have a lot of eights here <clears throat> so it's a cycle in your life that is definitely coming to an end and it has to do with relationships all right because the strength card is ruled by leo that is like those are that is a sexual relationship <clears throat> um eight then you have um the sixth mermaid here that's about people who kind of come in and drain your energy and then this eight eight of lotus here is about uh toxicity people who uh bring imbalance to your life who don't who you don't feel like you can operate around efficiently effectively confidently you know because eight is about confidence as well so Sagittarius, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope that this has been helpful for you. It's light. <laughs> All right. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I'm sending you so much love. I hope that you have a beautiful spring. Um, if you're open to it, let me know. 
how you feeling about this. I would love to see what you have to say. And yes, I will see you in the summertime. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful spring. And yeah, all my love. Bye.